Welcome to another video. I'm Rena Wells, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. I would love it if you would subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. And for my returning subscribers, I'm glad that you're tuning in again. Today I'm going to talk about Twin Flames and all things mystical in the unseen world. I'll tell you a little bit about myself in regards to my Twin Flame journey. And I'm going to really dive into the mysticism of everything. As magical and as profound as these connections are, I noticed in my own journey, which has been this entire incarnation, but has really started for me when I knew that I was looking for my divine counterpart was over 11 years ago when I ended my marriage. And so this process has been a long time for me. And I found it very difficult that there wasn't many things all mystical about it. You know, we talk about it and there are certain things out there that people don't want to talk about the karma and the dark energies around the twin flame journey. And yet it is such an important piece. And I believe that if we don't pay attention to all the energies, then we really are turning a blind eye to certain things and really keeping ourselves stuck in a constraint thought process instead of actually discovering the feelings and the energies that come up through the emotions. And so that's what this video is going to be really talking about, the oversoul, how the feminine energies interact with the masculine energies and vice versa the space between dark and light with the masculine and feminine energies interacting what merging really is all about and the sacredness of twin flames because there's so much information out there but a lot of it is so clingy and attaching and really has the energy of depression or lack thereof and this connection is supposed to be yes healing you in very deep places within yourself but it's also a very beautiful connection and so I'm going to allow spirit to channel and work through my experiences and my journey and to relay that back to you in a way that you may be able to absorb this in a different way the mysticism the energies and how to sort that out within your own journey so if you haven't subscribed yet please make sure you do so if you would like to know more about me all my information is down below i have a group membership on my site I'm sorry if you heard my phone I forgot to take off my my phone um, but yeah I have a group membership site where I do a lot of workshops and rituals and ceremonies and activations for group members it's also the only way to book a reading with me and to work one-on-one -on -one with me if you want to know anything about ceremonies in Mexico plant medicine ceremonies or working with me one-on-one, -on -one, please go to my website or feel free to email me. Again, all that information is down below. Okay, so let's get started and start talking about the Twin Flame journey, about the Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine energies. And I'm going to start with the profound sacredness of this connection. Spirit is guiding me to talk about that. There has been a lot of romanticizing about twin flames there's been a lot about unconditional love and I wanted to start with this point right here about unconditional love none of us on this planet really know what it is I'm just I'm just gonna be honest we have fallen in such a deep place of unconsciousness that we have only gotten glimpses of unconditional love and that is with our children for one you know uh, family members 
people that we hold very dear that no matter what they do, we are able to love and accept and be there and support them without compromising ourselves. Okay, that's a key point, right? Because unconditional love does not call you to compromise yourself. So I want you to sit with that for a little bit. You don't owe anybody when you're in a state of unconditional love. You don't compromise your desires and yourself and your truth for unconditional love. If you are doing that, even for your children, it's not unconditional love. Unconditional love is God's love. We love as God loves us. And if we aren't loving how God loves us, then we most definitely are not in unconditional love. Now, how does spirit and the universe love us? Well, I can guarantee a lot of us on this path get very pissed off when our prayers are not answered. We get very angry with God lots of times because we're not getting the synchronicities or we're not getting the signs. I can't tell you how many times I'll be driving down the road and I'm screaming at God, you know? <laughs> um, and we don't know the mysteries of spirit, you know, and God. And we, and when things happen, we get very angry in our path, which is the anger is reflected on our soul's expansion. That's why we feel those things. And so this state of unconditional love, and I'm going to even call that out with all of our teachers out there, our greatest teachers that are out there. I can honestly say anybody in that new age community right now, I don't believe that we are hitting a point of true unconditional love. I believe that we are experiencing glimpses. All of us are experiencing glimpses of it. I believe the ancient teachers like Moses and Jesus and Gandhi and Allah and Buddha and Shiva, there is a, there is a pathway. There is an etched in ancient road of this unconditional love that we are still all grasping to get a hold of. And I believe we're at a tipping point of knowing what that is. Okay. So the sacredness of this love, okay, it's holy, it is sacred. And so whatever games we are playing in this twin flame journey that has a vibration of lack, being angry, being fed up, hateful, all of those things. It is directing us to go back within and to realize that this journey is not in a vibration of unconditional love. And if it's not in a vibration of unconditional love, then why am I in it? The twin flame journey is a very magical journey. It is not going to play into feelings of physical stimulus and I said this in the last video again if you haven't listened to uh, the last video that I made in regards to psychics and then paths and intuitives and how the darkness affects your psyche I highly suggest to go listen to that as well and so if this journey is about discovering unconditional love because we just need to all admit that we really don't know God's love fully. We get little glimpses of it. We can taste it. It's almost like that carrot that's dangling in front of you. And it opens up, that magical doorway opens up. And so when you meet your twin, it is completely dynamic. You do not fall in love with your twin. That's the fall this whole falling in love concept that humans have created means that you have to somehow fall in consciousness to be with somebody. That's ego love. That's not real love. You don't need to fall or do anything for God's love. You rise up and you just, you are it. You become it. You, you already are love. And so with the twin flame dynamic, when you first meet your twin, it is the most profound divine love experience that will unmatch, it will not match anything that you've ever experienced before. It is completely next level, sacred, holy connection. If anything, the best comparison to compare twin flame love is the innocence of children. 
It's an innocent love. It's a pure love. It is a beautiful, loving, innocent love. That is the best way that I can describe it. And with these children just walking through the woods, you can see um, that that's what it feels like. It's just a pure, divine love that children share. And if we are to come back to being that innocence of a child, and you've had trauma in your life, and most twin flames have, it is to rediscover that innocence of our truest selves, healing that inner child, so that these two children can come together. Because we are children of spirit. We are children in the earth plane. Perfect. So now that we've established the holiness of twin flames and the sacredness and knowing that none of us on this planet have fully aligned to pure unconditional love and living in that way on a consistent basis. And yes, we have many teachers that are holding longer increments of that in their life, which is helping all of us to rise as well. Twin flames are very important. That's coming in with the age of Aquarius. And the reason for that is the potency of twin flame love because of that purity and divinity. It's coming back to the place of the Garden of Eden, you know, the city of gold. We hear in our mythologies all of these beautiful places of peace and love and abundance and it is a possibility because we're here in the womb of the mother and the mother has all of these types of abundance key codes but there's also dark codes on the planet i'll get into more of the coding and the grid work of gaia if you would like to know more make sure that you have subscribed to this channel because there'll be many more videos that are coming out and spirit has shown me that with covid and the pandemic and everything that's happening we as a mass consciousness are grasping at the last bits of unconditional sorry unconscious love and we're moving into unconditional love and we're going to fall further into darkness and this is why the real leaders of this earth plane are being prepped have been prepped their entire lives and why we've been hearing why twin flames are coming together more in a sacred union and why there is so much awakening that's happening the grid lines on the planet have experienced twin flame love we have Shiva and Pravati, who also turns into Kali and her dark feminine energies. We have Moses and his wife, who was the eldest. I'm sorry, I don't have her name off the top of my head because I wasn't planning on speaking about Moses, but he's coming through a lot. Uh, and he chose the eldest of all the sisters because of her wisdom instead of the, you know, excitement and the physicality of uh attraction that humans have fallen in consciousness which is how most of us come into relationships is out of physical stimulus and attraction first of all or an intellect connection or a persona connection it's something outside of ourselves twin flames don't operate that way right twin flames operate from a higher source from the main source of creation of godlike energy And Moses chose that his wife is the oldest. If you go back and read the story of Moses again, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name. Um, they were twin flames. And we also have Jesus and Mary Magdalene. We have all the archangels. If you do some research and you go into uh, ancient text, the Sumerian text and the Kabbalah text, there is talk about all the archangels having a divine counterpart as well as their shadow sides as well. So there's a lot of information that's out there, Egyptian times with Osiris and, and um, Osiris and why am I not thinking of the goddess name right now? Um, 
Isis. <laughs> Thank you. Isis and Isis. And, and the reason why spirit, it's so funny how when I channel, um, how we've taken Isis and we have demoralized that feminine energy, that goddess energy of Isis and what she stood for. She's one of the strongest twin flame uh, feminines on the planet with Osiris because she actually went into the depths of hell to bring her consort, to bring Osiris back to life, to bring him out of the darkness, to lead the way. She really, Isis, showed the pathway for divine feminines and how divine feminines hold that strong pillar of light between heaven and earth. We are the only ones that bring forth souls. We nurture them within our body and pass souls through the higher realms into the earth plane. And so feminines have a great capacity to work in dense energy as well as very high energy. And the feminine energies are the architects, the blueprint who hold the blueprint and the codes and the vision, the high vision. And it is the masculine energy that brings in that blueprint and makes the 3D changes and evaluates the 3D plane to know what's safe and how to move about in the physical world. Okay. And so the grid work is there in the earth plane for twin flames because we have all these ancient uh, goddesses and teachers and um, those that formed our main religions had a divine counterpart. Now, if you follow, follow sorry, any of Edgar Cayce's work, he's amazing. He was a sleeping prophet. If you haven't, I would highly recommend looking him up. He was way back in the 50s, I believe, but don't quote me on that. And he was a sleeping prophet and spoke a lot about twin flames as well. Socrates did as well as Plato. And so there's a lot in our philosophy over the years. So Twin Flames is not a new age concept, although it has definitely become that because of the romanticism of it. This is why Spirit really wanted to bring in the sacredness of Twin Flames, because this isn't something where you meet somebody and you create a mission with them and you say, oh, let's do this and let's build this together and let's do this together. And then you put that in a vision board and you manifest it and it happens. That's soulmate love. And there's nothing wrong with soulmate love. Twin flames do not get a choice. <laughs> That's because all the choices were made in a higher dimension, in a higher realm before this incarnation. Okay. The plan of God was orchestrated before you came into this incarnation. And the reason for that was to go through a treacherous, dark path. All twin flames have had trauma. We cannot experience high vibrations of divinity if you do not know the complete opposite of that. To be able to know pure, source love is to know pure sinister evil and this is where a lot of twin flames get stuck in their trauma and i've seen it in my clients and i've seen it in the twin flame communities even with twin flames that are in union i'm seeing the depletion of their source light because they are still so stuck in transmuting the deep trauma and the reason for that why even our twins that are in union right now working on their partnership and really going down to the depths of hell and then rising that up together is because of the reconnection back to mother earth that's what spirit is saying is because this connection is to align with the ancient gridways that's already been in place on the earth plane. Now, these gridways and these ancient pathways are very dusty. They're overgrown. We can't see them. We can't feel them. And this is where a lot of magic and earth magic and working with paganism and Wicca and all of these things, anything that works with earth medicines, 
all of this was to activate that grid work and this is where you also see a lot of sex magic things that are coming out in the new age community but i wanted to also bring up that those ancient grid ways of true twin flame love can't be activated with a soulmate it cannot spirit is saying it cannot and and the reason for that is because soulmates thank you spirit soulmates yes they have a contract to come together but they also have a choice that if they do separate that they will have cleared separate energies away from each other to pursue other interests so there's a lot more thank you spirit is saying flexibility in free will now with twin flames it's a little different yes you still have free will you don't have to be with your twin flame but it's a lot harder because once that merging happens that first dynamic merge all of those energies are coming from a very high source of pure divine light and love that it infiltrates both twins and their energy bottoms aligning their chakras because twin flames have the same soul blueprint and they also have the same soul frequency they also have completely aligned chakras the third eyes line up the crown chakras line up the throat the heart everything lines up the root the reason twins go into separation is because these chakras aren't fully cleared to come into a complete alignment with each other okay and so because twin flames have this complete chakra alignment if you place you know your hands together in a prayer stance and just separate you know just a little bit your hands so there's a very little space between there that's because your chakras are completely aligned if you take each hand as one masculine and one feminine that space is a very fine uh, space that's the amount of flexibility for free will and i truly believe that twins are meant to come together at this time to help planet earth reactivate these grid lines and when these grid lines are reactivated on the earth plane, all the ancient history will come up, which will create these huge pillars of light, which will help the rest of the mass consciousness find the brightest light in the darkest of days that are coming. And I'm not saying this to scare anybody, but we must be realistic. And if you're listening to this, I know you're a new leader of the new earth. And if you're listening to this, you know that this is just the start, right? This is just the start of humanity really waking up. But when you are a twin flame, you have been walking this dark path of discovery your entire incarnation. And I've realized even on my own journey, as I look back, I realize things in my path of why those things needed to happen in order for me to meet my twin and for the mission that I see for us and, and what's happening for us as one possibility we'll get into that as the oversoul because again we still have free will with our twin flame however it's less flexibility when these grid lines are activated it is up to the feminine energy first to ground and heal because the feminine energy holds high frequency codes that can be transmuted from a higher dimension through her body through her energy system and ground that through her feet and her womb and her sacral and her root chakra into the earth those energy codes go into the earth and mama gaia pachamama mother earth will take those codes and distribute them wherever they need to go on the planet mother earth gains energy also from her children and so the feminine energies do a lot of the brunt work at the beginning in regards to twin flames and i know this is a hard one for a lot of divine feminines i know most of you are my subscribers i have a few men that i've worked with that are on this channel but i know the majority are divine feminines and i know it's hard work my divine feminines now divine feminine energy is not necessarily in a woman's body let's just make that clear energy is energy it is 
not aligned to a body okay and your journey will be different based on the body that you choose but that's an entirely different um, topic that we can get into in another point if it comes up and so feminine energy because we are the architects and we have the ability to bring in the higher codes that means that we have to start grounding this into the earth plane that starts to activate those grid lines. Spirit is saying twin flames have already been enlightened. They've already been awakened. They are from a completely different frequency and different souls are created in different frequencies. And so nothing again is what's better or what's worse or someone's more evolved than me because they're created in 12th dimension frequency. Like this is not a competition. Okay, guys, everybody is needed where they need to be. We cannot build a world if you're putting, let's say you have a, a puzzle piece of a world, you know, you can't, um, you know, put Africa on the map and be that one puzzle piece that holds, you know, the middle of Africa and then be the Atlantic Ocean at the same time. <laughs> we live in a separate world. And so every person is a puzzle piece and it doesn't matter where you're fitting you could be at the top of the map or you could be at the bottom it doesn't matter what spirit is saying is that your placement is important and so we need to get away from this whole competition of who's more psychic who's more aware who's a better shaman who's a better healer who's a better tarot reader whatever the case may be your placement is important and wherever your placement is is to own your power in that placement but we can't be anything that we didn't choose to be in this lifetime not everyone's going to be a tarot reader not everybody is going to uh, be a mother not everybody is going to be a healer okay there are people that we need to do the book work we ha have people that we need that don't mind taking care and cleaning and keeping things in order to help those that need that support so everybody has a place okay now it is up to the feminine energies to ground this into the earth plane and this is the importance of separation so it doesn't matter in the 3d level what your masculine has done to you Yes, you have to deal with the human emotions. Yes, you have to have the respect for yourself and love in a 3D plane. And this is where I teach about, instead of merging everything as one in your mind, it gets very complicated. I like to segregate from human personality to my soul's knowing. And I think it's a very important distinction to make that so that you can work with the energy separately of your human psyche and psychological patterns and belief systems, uh, what happens in your heart as well, and those emotions so that you're just observing those emotions, if they either come from the psyche, from the mind, or if they're actually coming from divinity and somewhere deep within you, or your gut instincts as well. And your gut instincts are your soul and your intuition and hits from spirit and truth and deep authenticity sits in your pelvic floor and so if you can separate those three brains within yourself first you'll start to recognize what energies play into each container and that's how I teach my clients to work because it's in that separation that you will gain energy discernment and know deeply authentically what energies are happening in your life within yourself first before they actually manifest okay it's it sounds easy when i explain it but i you know that this work takes deep work and uh deep inner reflection and so feminine energies when you have your merge with your masculine, you also have the ability to feel him, his intuition, his feelings, his trauma, his pain. And you will actually express that as well. And this is the piece where I see a lot of twin flames getting confused, especially those that are in union as well, is a lot of feminines don't realize that they're purging for their masculines as well. So I'm going to get into that now. The dynamic energies of the twin flame merge for the feminines 
in order to bring in those high vibrational codes into the earth plane it can take up to years in separation and this is why the separation process happens now during this time spirit says the flipping of the energy on with the feminine energy that it that happens on the inside is a full 180 flip and so they're bringing up you know the way that I worked with energy I had to learn at a very young age of how to work with my sensitivity uh, I spoke to spirit since I mean this whole entire incarnation and learning how to work in these energies spirit took that away from me after I met my twin however I thought how I worked with my sensitivity was completely gone after we merged and I realized as well, Spirit is bringing up how the feminines purge for the masculine. I noticed that during an ayahuasca ceremony with my twin, that the synchronicity was so profound that Mama Ayahuasca asked me to purge for him. <laughs> I can be honest, I was not happy about that. I'm like, why can't he purge it himself? But this is what feminines do. This is what the feminine energy does. We have so much love and nurturing that we take it on, you know? We take on what spirit asks us. And you know that when you're in divine feminine energy, you're like, okay, I will sacrifice myself for this. And I know feminines do that on a regular basis, but that's another piece that also needs to be healed on a 3D plane. But we'll get into that as well. And when I purged for him, immediately once I was done, he purged. And that happened again over a couple other phone conversations. I would absorb and feel what he was feeling and the toxicity, the density of it, that I would have to get off the phone and purge. This is normal for feminines, but what's happening in our Twin Flame community is that we're taking it as our own, some of us have recognized this is not me. I'm in a good space today. Why am I all of a sudden feeling sad or angry or whatever else is coming up? We have made the distinction that it's the connection with the, with the masculine. Or vice versa. If you're masculine listening to this and you've awakened first, Spirit is saying um, you're working on the feminine aspect within your energy, then this is happening for you as well. Now, even though we recognize that we're feeling them, feminine energy still has a resistance to actually allowing it to come through us. Because we immediately bring the, the aspect of separation into the connection. And it's absolutely impossible to be separate from your twin. In this 3D reality, geographically, I, or you know, you're, you live at a distance or you're not talking, that's still just 3D reality stuff because we know as twin flames you are connected in all aspects except for the 3d plane when you're in separation and so this is where i bring divine feminines into feeling your masculine because what's happening in in the masculine energy is actually happening with the feminine energy there is a point when you go within yourself and the deeper that you go within yourself you're going to hit the bottom of your internal world so I want you to just go as far down as you can until you can no longer go any further down to your pelvic floor go within yourself and your feelings and travel all the way down to the deepest part of you and you may notice that it's never ending but there is a plateau that you will stop where you won't go further down and that's divine feminine energy is that we can go very deep now to that deepest point that you can go is the meeting place that when your masculine energy goes down into the depths of their inner being they meet you and this is actually how I read energy as well because if you get down to that deepest place in that place you can connect to anybody else as well and get into their internal world and read energy it's very easy because within that place within us is where we all meet. However, 
the soul frequency with you in your twin flame is so exact is that meeting point that you become one with your twin that you also feel and purge because it is that same energy that is within you to a certain depth that you're unable to recognize and it is your counterpart that is bringing that awareness into your energy field so that you can go to that deepest point within yourself and the same happens with the masculine energy when they go deeply within themselves and tap into their feminine side because that's the depth of the feminine energy it goes deep within the feelings so when a masculine switches out of masculine 3d stimulus physical world you know creation force energy to build and moves into the feminine aspect within themselves is the point that they start to discover excuse me, they start to discover that their feelings and their connection is the same frequency as their counterpart. Now, this is the point where a lot of masculine energies are unable to do that sensitive work and to go into their feminine energy. And this is another reason why separation happens and why some masculine twin flames do not recognize the connection or they are unconscious to the depths of the feelings. Okay. It is because it is up to the feminine energy who's able to f- go down to that depth because that's the natural movement of feminine energy. We're able to go to the deepest and the deepest and the darkest places, you know in feeling and emotion within ourselves. And unless your masculine has had some massive awakening, I mean, I know my twin, he's done ayahuasca and he's a highly sensitive soul. I know he, I know he's awakened to this, but I know that there's a lot that aren't. And the reason for that is because it's in your path to be able to purge without hesitation whatever is coming up, even if it is their feelings, even if it is their anger, even if it is their depression. This is why Isis has come up in this channel teaching, because she did that for Osiris, to go into the depths, to release it, because that's where twins have the bondage in the darkness and that's where darker forces and darker entities start to suck from their one over soul light because it is such a pure potent sacred light and whenever you have light that bright you will have the most sinister and this is where we're going to get into karma as well of why karma follows such a bright beautiful connection Again, you cannot have ultimate light without ultimate darkness. And this is the mysticism where I know I'm supposed to be teaching in regards to the darker forces and how to stand very strong in that. Okay, so before we get into the karma aspect, I'm going to go a little bit more into the feminine energies. And so as the feminine energy is starting to Except, yes, this is the masculine that I'm feeling. That's step one. Okay, here I'm feeling this. My masculine is in a really depressed state. What feminines usually do is, oh, I'm going to pray for him or I'm going to do a healing for us. <laughs> and spirit is saying, no, <laughs> no. That is the overgiving feminine that we do in the 3D plane that I said I was going to bring up again. You know, we say, as feminines, oh, I'll do this for you, and I'm going to nurture you, and I'm going to take care of you. And in the 3D plane, that has become a distorted feminine energy, okay? We don't give to others first, not even our children. Divine feminine energy, that's an unconscious feminine. Divine feminine energy always gives to herself first, feeds herself first so that she is ample and full so that she can nurture everyone around her. And this includes your masculine energy, but not in the way that you think, oh, I'm going to meditate for him, I'm going to do a healing for us. Um, 
It's about going into the feeling and the connection. Okay, my my counterpart is here. I'm feeling him. He's angry. Let's go into that. Let's feel it. Let's express it because it needs to be released. This is the one soul where you're meeting in the depths. Your masculine is going within the depths into the feeling to the point where you're feeling it. That means you're connected. That means that you're in communication. That means that your souls are exchanging, right? It's within you. Again, this is not this 5D stuff that we're talking about in the New Age community. Like, oh, let's rise it up to 5D and bring it down to 3D. Again, do you see those are all levels? I don't like talking about levels. I like talking about frequency and placement. Okay, and so this placement is within yourself. And so if you're feeling that, Spirit is asking you to accept that feeling. Yes, it's depressing. I need to cry. I need to purge this. Purge it now. Spirit is saying when you allow that to come in, it is medicine for you from your counterpart. That that depression also is sitting somewhere inside of you for you see twins mirror exactly. Okay, the energies are exact. And you may disagree and say, well, no, my twin is was very angry and I could feel his anger. I was in a complete place of peace. Spirit is saying, on a surface level, you may be at a complete uh, at a complete space of peace. But what Spirit is saying is in that moment, your masculine energy has gone into the feminine, into a place that is bringing this up, that is now igniting the one soul where you two meet, that is bringing in the medicine for you to go within it and to recognize, okay, I'm feeling this sadness, I'm going to go into it and to recognize your own triggers. Now that energy that's coming in from your twin, where is that activating within you? And how do you use that energy from your twin as medicine to heal yourself? Because it is within you. It is something of an unconscious pattern that you have not seen, but your counterpart has discovered it. And so the same will happen on the journey with your counterpart, with the masculine energy. The more that you go within these feelings, the more that you go into the pain of it, express it, heal it, find it within you, it will then energetically bring it up for the masculine to transmute also for the feminine okay now that's the first aspect of healing in separation and that can take a long time because you're also getting telepathy and dreams and all of these signs but spirit is saying all of those gifts that you're getting is not to avoid it's not to fix you know, we want to immediately fix the situation. We immediately want to send healing. We immediately want to do a ritual. We immediately want to pull cards to validate. We immediately want to go find a reading on YouTube. <laughs> you know, we immediately want to do all of these things. And Spirit is saying, no, I want you to recognize that you are to tr transmute it. You purge for your masculine as your masculine will eventually purge for you as well. Okay, it's coming back into that one place where you meet, where it's an exact mirror. There is no individualism here, okay, in this place of depth. You are the same soul. And it's a recalibration and alliance and a balance that's happening between the one soul, between the masculine and the feminine energy. And so whoever is discovering the medicine or the pain or the the pattern and it's coming up within one it will bring it up in the other and so for feminines in the first part of separation is to go within it yes i know it can be suffering this is where you got to hit me up okay for some coaching or come do medicine if you're into plant medicine and ayahuasca come do feminine ceremonies with with me in mexico but being able to go into that, that's what Isis showed us. Feminine energy goes into the darkest places. And we find that, yes, that may be my masculine in a depressed state, but I'm feeling it, I'm purging it, I'm working with it. This is within me. Where does that trigger 
my energy body on the inside. I need to heal that within myself and I need to balance that with action. I need to balance this feminine energy with the other energy of masculine energy. And it's the same thing that happens with masculine energy. Sometimes we, you know, get so into our work and producing and creating and creating more content and work, 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 work and organizing and building. That can get burnt out as well. And if you're predominantly in a masculine energy, which is now for divine masculines listening to this, you will get so burnt out to that point that it's forcing you to go into the feminine energy to feel something again. And this has been very hard for divine masculines on the planet is to be in that sensitive place. But it is the life force that feeds the 3D world, right? And so if masculines that are completely unawakened or are in an unconscious masculine role, they are unable to really feel right? Because they are just stuck in the loop of building. Now, as masculines awaken, that sensitivity and those emotions come right up because that is the reconnection to the divine feminine energy. And masculines will start to realize that whenever they go into a feeling place or they do inner work or they get deep within themselves, they will recognize that that energy matches their divine feminine. And this is why some masculine energies run and refuse to do this work. That they continue to try and live the way that they always have by controlling that feminine energy within themselves. However, when the feminine energy accepts to go into those places that pop up for her, the suffering or whatever else is coming up, even if it's from yourself or it's from your divine counterpart, you are healing and transmuting that you're going into that divine feminines and you're releasing it. And when you release, it goes into the grid lines, into the earth. Now masculines work on a 3D plane. And so the more that you release divine feminines into the earth plane, those grid lines light up and your masculine, masculine energy creates in a 3D plane on the earth plane. And the more you release, the more potent those grid lines become, the more it will awaken your masculine, no matter what they're doing. And those masculines that are awakening will realize that they cannot play in old patterns or old ways of being any longer. The pull will become so strong that they will have to follow their calling. Now let's get into the topic of free will. There is free will. That both twins can actually come into a place of not being together, but still working energetically, telepathically together in the energies. And this is something that I've discovered that I've been doing. Now, this takes a great amount of work because my twin and I have a very strong telepathic connection, dream state, tele- telepathy, energy, knowing of each other. And what makes it very difficult is being able to close those doorways of telepathy down within yourself to forge a full separateness in the 3D world, but yet still honoring the energy that comes up. So for instance, once you have completed a lot of your healing in separation with your twin and you have surpassed, you know, hatred or betrayal or you've forgiven, you've moved on, you've cried, you've purged. And and I know this process can be quite the up and down. I cannot tell you how many times I had to drink ayahuasca to heal <laughs> um, the depth that he had touched me. You know, I mean, nobody has come um, between me and God, you know, and so when he walked in like he owned my soul, I was like, what? <laughs> completely shook my world you guys completely shook my world um took me out of my peace for quite a while 
but there comes a point that you know you have transmuted so much of that pain and that suffering into the grid lines of earth mother gaia that you've realized that you can now shut down certain doorways between you and your twin on the inside and i've been able to shut down that telepathy piece i've been able to really move out into my own space and since i've been working I'm taking courses with Shimshay and Susanna. They are an amazing twin flame couple. If you guys do not know them, I believe they're probably the most potent twin flames on this planet that I've come across. Shimshay and Susanna, they're amazing shamans and uh, healers, medicine people. And they've been able to merge their energies for sure and work in that. And there's a point that you're able to close off those telepathic doorways but still balance and hold pure divine light and do your mission and come into a full place of surrendered state now when that happens it is completely up to spirit to bring the twins together for mission work and I don't believe twins are just friends I believe twins are everything I I this is another piece that I don't understand in the New Age community that people are like, yes, you can just be friends with your twin. And and I love how we tried to put a box around God's love. Like that's trying to chop our planet up into like little tiny pieces and like putting it into like a four by four box or something like you. It's just impossible to do. Creation is so huge and so magnificent. And so this connection with your twin is going to be every relationship you've ever experienced in your life. It will be friend, lover, brother, parent, sibling, coworker, boss, everything. There's not a role in your life that you will not experience, uh, that you haven't experienced in your life that you will not experience with your twin. You will experience it with your twin. Okay. That's why it's such a profound connection. And that's why you have so much healing to do in your life. This is why your family lineage is so important to heal with your parents, to heal with your siblings, to heal with your aunts and your uncles, your grandparents, uh, to come into that deep understanding because your twin will mimic a lot of your family patterns. And the reason for that is because you are to heal your ancestry line. Okay. So this video is coming up to an hour and I've realized this topic is so big, we're going to have to put it into different parts. So this will be part one, talking about the earth grid lines and everything that we've talked about in regards to feminine and masculine energy and separation. The next video I'm going to do will be on twin flames. And I guess this is going to be a series for part two, we'll get into dark energies, black magic. Uh, how that affects the twin flame connection and we're going to go into karma karmic cycles and what that means in the twin flame journey so make sure you hit the subscribe and that notification bell so you don't miss anything else i'm also sorry if you're hearing an alarm they just started doing some alarm testing in my condo building and um, another reason why i've had to cut this short but I'm taking it as an alarm from spirit that this was more than enough potent vibrational energy to absorb and to soak in. And so please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear any epiphanies, any comments, any uh, things that you've gotten from this video or from the new series that I've been doing and what you've been thinking about the channel so far. And stay tuned because I can't wait to get into all the dark stuff and karma stuff and what happens with twins in regards to that. So, so much love and we'll be talking to you soon. And if you guys want to work more with me, make sure you check down below with my website and my membership. I do a lot of ceremonies and workshops and activations and things like that. So if that's interest of you, you can hit me an email, send me an email or join and just check out my website and I'm sending you so much love. <laughs> There's the alarm. Take care guys.